G'day guys, welcome back to Beers and Breakevens brought to you by Bloke in a Bar. Go out, grab yourself a case this weekend. Short week of footy by round, round 17. We've been planning for it for a number of weeks. It's going to be a pretty uh, pretty big weekend as far as Supercoach goes this year. How are we feeling about it, Timmy? Good guru, good to be back at the bar. Um, pretty well placed for it. Uh, I've been planning for this one for a while. The, the Campbell Graham news was a real ball breaker for one person on this table, not named you. <laughs> um, but yeah, pretty well placed. 13 blokes on deck as it stands. So whether or not there's that many come game day, we'll see. Now, mate, let's get stuck into it first and foremost. Uh, Supercoach Playbook, you've launched something new this week that I think is going to change Supercoach. And I think once you use it, it's going to be game fucking over. You're never losing. You're never going to look back. Yeah, mate. SCPlaybook.com.au. We've launched a, a big data centre called Stat HQ. So basically, it's a one-stop shop for a bunch of different stats, all free to use on the website. Um, things like all, all your obvious break-evens, uh, price changes, all those sorts of things, season averages that you get standard. Uh, on top of that, tools such as like price change calculators where you can punch the numbers in, see what blokes will be priced at in a couple of weeks. Uh, the big one, I mean, there's a few, the Vice Captain Loophole Calculator, which is an absolute cracker, helps guide your, if you are looking to VC Loophole, which is a lot of people quite often, uh, gives you a bit of a, an idea there. Uh, and then Adam DeRussi's True Player Ownership Stats, which is an absolute belter and one of the best sort of articles, I think, in Supercoach. We've got that True Player Ownership for, for each player. And what that does is basically tell you the Supercoach site with 150-odd thousand players in the game can be quite misleading in a player. So someone who might have got injured early in the season and was a popular player might be owned by 15% of Supercoaches overall because there's a lot of Supercoaches out there who stop playing after rounds 5, 10, whatever, fall asleep. Um, what this does is tell you what ranking bracket, what percentage that player is owned by. So, for example, Jerome Hughes, uh, who on the Supercoach website is owned by 12% of overall players. Our site will tell you that he's actually owned by 1% in the top 100. Who do we think that is? The best 1% in the top 100. <laughs> Proceed. If the top 1,000 teams, he's owned by 2% of players, top 5,000, 3%, top 10,000, 3%. You go all the way to the top 100,000 teams, 10% own him. So it allows you to differentiate your teams and get a real idea of who your competitors have got and if you want to try and jump some rankings. So, yeah, that's all up there in the menu on our website. So go and check it out if you're interested. Those ownership stats, they are actually game-changing. Yeah. They're like, ever since you introduced me to uh, Darussi a couple of weeks ago, having his phone number has been game-changing. Yeah. To have them just sitting there. That's huge. I know. I obviously got a lot of use out of them in 2020. 2019, Desi Creek, who was the champion that season, who writes for SC Playbook, uh, he got in contact with Darussi, or they got in contact just for a Supercoach chat for him somewhere, uh, and he helped him the whole way to the end with these stats. So they're hot shit, and hopefully they can help people out on the run home this year. Yeah, definitely worth having. We'll get into our rankings and stuff first. We'll throw to uh, Matty the Waterboy first to get a hold of his ranks. I actually had someone message me this weekend and say, uh, hey, guys, really enjoying the show, having a good time, learning a lot every week, not doing as well as you and Timmy, but I am beating Matty, so that's good. <laughs> and I felt like saying, you poor bastard, you poor, poor bastard. That's Waterboy, a, what's doing? Uh, I'm, I'm very good. That's Yeah, it's a low bar to... To try and reach, I barely look at my team, but put the I'm, bar at his ankles. Yeah, I'm I've I've broken from the forty thousand to fifty thousand bracket this week into the thirty thousand to forty thousand bracket. I'm thirty nine thousand four hundred and fifty ninth. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so I'm 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 officially back. You can Matt, use Matt, one of your fucking five boosts this Matt week. Is so. Matt is going with a real bold anti play anti pod <laughs> play this season of having trades <laughs> left at the end of the season and. You know, it's risky, but it could pay off. Yeah, it's a bold play, Cotton. I'm all for it, though. Uh, I scored last week 1,222. I jumped up a little bit, so I'm ranked 26th overall now. Very happy with that. To me, how are you travelling? Uh, 1162 last week. Dropped uh, a few spots to 260th overall. So a couple of drops last two weeks. You messaged me of the Sunday morning saying you were about one one twenty behind me and I sort of thought, uh, wet day, I think you had two players, I was done. I thought, all right, we'll probably be pretty similar. We came in for the, the bloke in a bar potty on Monday and you are about 70 or 80 in front of me odd. Mm. I've gone, how the hell did that happen? Joe Tappany. Joe Tappany, he's killing you. I'm absolutely delighted with what he's doing for the Raiders, but he's uh, really hurting my supercoach side as a non-owner. But yeah, so thereabouts anyway, mate. Yeah, no, we're doing well. So I'm 26, you're 260th. My maths, I think that means I'm a 10 times better player than you. Is that, is that <laughs> right? Or have I, I might have, anyway. Give or right, take. Give or take. Now, it's going to be interesting this week though, because uh, Timmy has done a lot better planning than me uh, for round 17. And I've sort of, 
I've been quietly confident the last few weeks that the that it wouldn't it wouldn't stack up to being 16, 17 players. I think you've got 13 this week, mm. which I'm fucking stoked with. I, I've only got nine. There's 338 points between us. So I, I, I've been fully expecting you to catch me the last few weeks. And you still could with one or two good performances, realistically, yeah, this weekend. Yeah, it's, it's, it'll be too big a gap, I think. The one that killed me where I thought maybe I could catch this week was Campbell Graham, mm. um, who you've obviously dodged there. So there's anywhere from sort of probably 50 to 120 points. Uh, so that's a real killer. I'm not alone. There's a lot of people who did own Campbell Graham. Uh, and to be honest, I've got 13, which I'm happy with, but there's a couple of guys that aren't confirmed this week. Andrew Fafita, who, let's be realistic, I wasn't banking on him getting 50 to 100 for me anyway. If he t- gets me 25, 30, I'll take it. Who I also don't have. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but again, not, not someone that I've sort of planned long-term for. It's just I had him and he was playing 17. Uh, four forward bench named at the Sharks, which is fine, but Hamlin Newelli on the extender bench. So hopefully he keeps his spot and just, as I said, if you can score me 25 points and be out next week, whatever. And then the other one is obviously Grant Anderson, who's been kept his spot on the wing with Dean Eremai as well. Nick Meany shifting to the halves with Co uh, Jaden Nicarima, sorry, on the extender bench. So, what are your thoughts there? Do we think that stays the same? Because I'm a little concerned. Maybe Meany goes back to the wing come game day. Nicarima in the halves, but it'd be a bit odd to name it that way, wouldn't it? I personally think Meany will stay there. I thought respectfully to Nicarima. Mm. I thought he played awfully the yeah. other night and he just didn't gel. It was like he needed a name tag out there. They weren't they were just they weren't passing him yeah. the ball. He wasn't a good player, Nicarima, but he just didn't fit in that side. So I'm expecting them to run as they are. Do you have Anderson? Yes. Yes thank I do. God, thank God. Yes. At least um, I can cop that if he uh, if he does get moved. Yeah, I'll but... tell you what, when I heard the Campbell Graham news, I was it really upset me. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I love Campbell. It's been a good Graham, show. <laughs> uh okay. Let's get into the group this week because we have got a couple of changes. Now, as I said, and we'll probably say another 30 times throughout this podcast, I'm 26 overall and I'm not in the top five in the beers and break-evens group, which is bonkers. Cannot believe that. Uh, so, number one in our group, let's go Brandon, uh, Rob's team there. He is third overall. And when you go and have a look at the top three, um, third is like 80 or 90 points away from fourth. So it really is sort of the top three on their own at the moment. So best of luck to Rob. Mate, reach out at Rugby League Guru, at Supercoach Playbook. Reach out to us so we can have a yarn to you. Alex, the bearded clams, he's second in our group, 11th overall. Porch Light, Sammy, he's made his way back up. He's 16th overall and third in our group. Jacob, fourth fourth in our group, 21 overall. And then Lachlan, who is fifth overall, 24 in our group. Pistol Pete, who is 25th, in, is who's um, sixth in our group, and then I'm seventh. So it's great. We've got seven in the top 26. Yeah, so uh, to be seventh in your group when you're 26 overall, not a bad sign for the RBs and break even. It's like the Harlem Globetrotters over here. Yeah. Can't even. It's unbelievable. The one good thing about you doing well, and if you can somehow pull a, a top spot finish out of your ass. It'll be good for the payouts, which we can do something with next year, but it might save me a couple of bucks. So. That's true. Unless I pay it to your pocket. Well, that's why I'm playing to save works. you a couple of bucks. So yeah, that's worked out well. That, if I pay it to your pocket, then, we, uh, <laughs> then we've got real drama. All right. Let's, uh, let's get stuck into Teamless Tuesday that dropped yesterday. Only four games. Thursday, we've got the Sharks taking on the Storm. As I said, I've got nine players this week. Seven of them are playing in this game, mm. uh, which is one of the great pains in the ass of all time. We're going to have a VC discussion a little bit later because I think that's going to be the biggest question of the week. And I'm going to throw a third VC from this game into the, into the works, which we'll talk about. Uh, but Tracy, he comes in for Talakai playing Origin, of course. Nico Hines, he returns at halfback. Uh, the big news, though, you mentioned it, Hamlin ULA. He's on the extended. He could come in, which would spell trouble for Fafita, which whilst Fafita's not superstar player, there's a lot of guys like yourself that have kept him for this round 17 clash. Uh, Hamlin Newella, I would argue before he got injured, he was their best forward. Mm. So you would assume that if he is fit, he comes in straight away. How, how are you feeling about this one? What, what, what's your gut call at the moment? I'm just checking now to see if Hamlin Newella played last week, New South Wales Cup, and no, he didn't. So my gut, like he's been out for a long time. My mm. gut feels as he return, turns through New South Wales Cup. It's a big game in that they're playing Melbourne, but at the same time... Like, they're winning games. They don't need him rush back into this team. They've got a really a quite dominant four-pack at the moment. As we've said, we've got the four-forward bench. What that does do, it gives them the option of playing him 20 minutes off the bench, basically the Fafita role. Um, my gut feel says he'll be re- he'll come back through New South Wales Cup this week, which would just be magnificent for Fafita. But 
as I said, as as big a blow as it'd be, <coughs> we're probably only getting 25, 30 points yeah. out for feeder anyway. So if it does happen, it's not the end of the world. And uh, it'd, it'd probably, it may impact my trades, which we get to a bit later on as well, uh, if that does happen. Uh, interesting to note, Hamlin Uello, he has not been named in New South Wales Cup. He's the only one on that extended bench outside of Trindle that hasn't been named uh, in New South Wales Cup. So it doesn't mean he is coming in. I think there's a good chance he's still probably 18th man. Yep. Uh, but watch that space. At least you'll know early. Yep. If you do know early, do you fuck for feeder off or do you just... Yep. So yeah, so what? What? I'll get to it now. Uh, what it, it... There's still a bit I've got to work out with my side, but I'm looking at maybe someone like Jed Cartwright into my team is enough with the dual position. Uh, but... If Fafita doesn't play, I can probably go him down to Fanua Pole, mm. um, which it's hard because he's only front row forward position, but he's a bloke who could make a bit of decent money and, and be a half right now, but we're only basing this off one game. But I, I think I, the fact that he's also 175k as opposed yeah. to uh, Cartwright, who's about 205 a uh, bit of extra handy cash there. So, yeah, I think it, it'll probably influence my trades. And we've got plenty to talk on Nuffs this week. We've got a topic coming up just after the team list, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, for the Melbourne Storm, Anderson, he holds on to his spot. I was a little bit nervous this week. Uh, and Brandon Smith in the nine. There is the chance that Nicarima comes back into this side and we see Meany move around. But personally, I think they will run as they are. Friday night, Knights versus Bunnies. For the Newcastle Knights, got KP and Dane Gagai out. Texi at fullback. Once again, Bradman Best comes back in the centres as well. Um, I've got a couple of questions about Bradman Best this week. I don't think I could do it personally, but... Best, what a... I won't say an NRL fall from grace because he still punched out some good stuff, but... He promised to be like a super coach stud a couple yep. of years back. And I know he's had his injury um, issues in the last couple of seasons, limited games at times, but like he averaged 62 back in 2020. He, remember, he was like the base stat king. He was punching like 40 base per game. Blokes couldn't tackle him, so he had that upside. Uh, and he just hasn't been <coughs> relevant super coach wise for, for a while now. Uh, you know, if he had a couple of games under his belt and we'd had a look at him come back and he'd come out well, it'd be a real smoky, but. No, nah, not for me. As we mentioned before in the pre-show, Campbell Graham, he is out. Uh, Tasson Milne come in. Uh, Cart- Cartwright also in the back row. He's enough that we will talk about soon. And there is a rumour going around that Alex Johnson, he could be mm. ruled out of this game as well, which could be a big one. I think we said before he's like 9 or 10% owned. Yeah. Something along those lines. So I'll whip up the Alex Johnson stats. Well, I sort of... I wasn't too sure how many he might have been owned by. I thought it, it wasn't a lot, but so the the official Supercoach site has Alex Johnston at eight percent ownership. I think it's actually a little bit higher amongst off the back of his awesome form, yeah. uh, a, a bit higher. So I think we're ten percent of the top one hundred ranked teams. So that's a twelve percent, no ten percent, ten percent, nine percent of the top thousand, eight percent top five thousand. Uh, down to 7% of the top 1,000. So there's enough numbers there that if he's pulled out, it'll it'll hurt a few sides. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's move to the Saturday game. We've got the Tigers taking on the Parramatta Eels. For the Tigers, uh, Adam Dewey's been named at centre. Brooks and Hastings remain in the halves. We've got uh, Paul, who's on the bench, who made his debut last week, scored 44 in Supercoach. We'll talk about him very soon. And uh, Matamua, I believe it's pronounced, he's mm. making his debut, another forward coming off the pine that they have very big wraps on. Uh, obviously, Brett Kamali's been told to blood some young guys here. Uh, so you, you might see a few more at the Tigers. It might, they might turn out to be a uh, little saving grace, the Tigers, yeah. moving forward. We'll see how and these guys go. Just on that, the bench makeup, a little bit interesting. So they've got, it is a four forward bench, but we're looking at guys like um, Pole, I said no idea how to pronounce that. I'm sure someone will pull us up, but... Pole there on the bench with Jacob Little as a hooker. Stefano Utakamano who's one game back from a, a relatively lengthy injury stint. He played 20-odd minutes last week. Amata Mue is a, an edge-back rower. Mm. So in terms of middle minutes in the middle, there could be some all right minutes again for Pole. So uh, in terms of a play this week, if you can punch out another 40-odd that he did last week, he, he could be all right as a... Maybe he can get you that 40 to 50 points. So Yeah, for sure. Here in the West, Tigers players are calling him the icy pole. Yeah. I might run with that We're until we get to. Uh, until someone can reach out, tell us how to pronounce his name properly. Which, if you do know, please reach out. Uh, for the Parramatta Eels, uh, not much really doing here. Opachik on the bench, which helps the forwards. But Matto, he has been named at thirteen. He's returning. 
Uh, we've got a question about Matto and someone else a little bit later, so we'll save that for then. Uh, Sunday afternoon, we've got the Broncos taking on the Dragons. Uh, Broncos, a heap of changes here. New comes in, Piera comes in. Forward pack looks completely different. Um, I've got a back rower who's another enough option that we'll talk about very soon. We'll get in depth on him uh, for the Dragons. Just nothing doing once again. Yeah. Ben Hunt shifts out. Uh, Bud comes in. Be good to see him in first grade again, but not much doing there. Um, now, just a reminder too, uh, something that we noticed over the last 24 hours, the Penrith Panthers, their New South Wales Cup team has been completely shelled this weekend. So they've pulled, I think, nine players out. So I think it's fair to assume that all of the origin players from the Penrith Panthers will be rested in round 18. They take on the West Tigers. Uh, so do what you will with that as far as betting markets, super coach, uh, something to note. Do you give the Tigers a chance next week or do they come up against Penrith reserve grade and get dusted? I think they could come up against Penrith SG ball side and, <laughs> and be probably dollar ninety a piece. They're just in trouble at the yeah, moment. The Tiggers, they're in serious trouble. Adam Dewey could be their saving grace. Hopefully he is. Hopefully he is. Yeah. But keep in mind next week, Brian Toto, Nathan Cleary, all these guys probably mm. won't play. Isaiah Yo, that's owned by a fair few as well. So uh, be prepared for that next week because that could be carnage. Appy, Appy's another big one there. Appy, yep. Yeah. Yep. There's a heap to go on there. All right, let's get stuck into and that Penrith side they could actually provide a couple of decent nuffs couldn't they there potentially they could yeah although this week's the week to nuff because you want to play them and get their yeah. points but you're, yeah they could like there'll be teams. like if a Taruva gets a start yep oh, I'm confident we don't see him again this year they're going to need a few injuries he'll really debut and run for about 600 Six, metres uh, yeah he'll score well for you too yeah. so uh, yeah we'll talk about that next week but something to keep note of uh, our hot topics this week mate so we've got the nuffs We've got the Icy Pole, Cartwright, Hosking. Um, who are you leaning towards? I'm, I sort of like, I prefer the Broncos back rower. Hopefully he gets put into super coach before it's too late. They have missed a couple in the past, but surely he's too relevant to miss out. I like him because I think he's the most, the one that is most likely not to be in the team moving forward. I'd say the, the next one that's most likely not to be in the team is Cartwright, but I worry with South in his injuries, harm Sele out and stuff. I worry that, he could become an option to wear the 17 jersey for South Sydney. The icy pole, I think he's playing well enough to potentially hold a spot in this team, but he, he, he could be a guy that could average 45 moving mm. forward. What do you think about all these nuffs? Who, who's your pick of the bunch? They're all so different, aren't yeah. they? And like, I, I'm battling at the moment to work it out. Looking at uh, the, the Bunnies bench configuration with, they've got Taff and Nikareem on the bench as it's named. So whether they run out like that, Probably not, to be honest, but the minutes look good for Cartwright this week. So you've got an 80-minute player who should score at least half all right. And the massive, massive thing about him and about Jules, uh, sorry, about Nuffs, I should say, is his dual positioning, CT dub, mm. second row forward. So just that added flexibility to swap him around and swap him with your Tungos and Talakai, so I own both of them, will be holding. It becomes so invaluable, and that's why I'm leaning towards him. There is the the AE nightmare worry that he comes on and plays like a 15 minute role for the rest of the season with the Bunnies injury issues. So for that reason, yeah, I'm a little bit concerned on him. He's also 205K, so another, what, 30K more than the other two. Uh, the Icy Pole is a bloke who, for the reasons mentioned before, could score well enough this weekend, could also become a sort of 15, 20 minute bench player. Uh, we don't know what's going there. We don't, I don't think there's been any confirmation on Alex Tuol. Uh, and then Hoskins, you're right. If you're after just a genuine one week enough, who's going to drop out and shouldn't be cited again this season, the fact he's been named to start, it's really big, isn't it? Yeah. Um, minutes wise, God knows how many will get there, but I suppose possibly the only risk with him is that the Broncos play the last game of the round. So what happens if he gets benched come game day and plays 20 minutes? I'm finding it really difficult to, to separate them at the moment. Yeah, it's tough. I, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I still haven't made my decision which one I'm going. I was just trying to see on the south site if we could see uh, the minutes that Jed Cartwright has played, but it doesn't look like he played <laughs> last weekend, so that doesn't help. Um, Pro yeah, right. Yeah, I worry about Jed getting becoming that Jersey 17. I also, I do. Do you, do you reckon he'll play 80 minutes this week? With Cheekham on the bench, I worry that he 
might not. So I think probably I think he goes very close to it. So that, get his side up, and we've got a current. Put it this way, with the current bench named, I think he definitely does. They can't run with that, sure. No, nah, because Moali, you're not going to get big minutes out of him. He's the middle in there. Cheekham's an edge and, you know, you can put him on as sort of a bit of a lock, but he's primarily an edge player as well. He's not a massive bloke. And then Taff and Nikarima. So if, it, if that team runs out Saturday night, yeah, he'll... Saturday night? Friday night, Saturday night. Saturday Friday, night. Friday, Friday night, night is when he's sorry. Um, yeah, I think he'll go close to 80. But it's, there's, I mean, they've just signed Saluka for feeder, so maybe he's 18. Surely he comes into this team. You'd think he comes in probably for Blake Taff. Yeah. Uh, in which case, that would make me less confident about Jed Carter, right? Because we know Kaloa Matangi on the other edge will play at his 80. Mark Nichols is also on a six day turnaround from a failed HIA last weekend. Does he play? Possibly not. Uh, I don't know. Let's throw to our uh, resident Redfern boy. Matty, how do you see – do you see South making changes to this team and any insight to Jed Cartwright? Do you reckon he plays big minutes there? I, I don't have insight, but just looking at the bench, I, I don't see how they can carry um, Nick Arima and Taff. Mm. So – and you're right, with, with Nichols being out as well. I actually don't – I haven't – I honestly haven't looked into it. I didn't, I didn't even consider Nichols until we just started this show, so um, – yeah, I can't really provide you anything. <laughs> Sorry. And whilst they're playing Newcastle, aren't a great team. It's a, it's a top shelf forward pack. Well, and here's the thing: this is what this is why I'm worried. And you yeah. brought it up earlier, Timmy. It's going to be fucking shit conditions there. Mm. It's going to be pouring down rain. The Knights' four pack, even though the Knights have been pretty average all year, their four pack on paper is elite. And our four pack is pretty much going to be a reserve grade four pack. So, yeah, the the Knights are looking pretty good this We've got weekend. Two eighty or something for the Knights. Yes, and I could not believe the odds prior to teams getting dropped. Matty, one that you may be able to help us with, mm. what the hell has happened to Trent Peoples? Because he has fallen off the face of the earth. I saw last week he was named off the bench in reserve grade yep. as a bloke who a lot of super coaches brought a month ago with just like a cash grab. But like, all right, surely with everyone out, he'll play around 17. I think you like him, Timmy, because your team, the Raiders, absolutely ripped him apart. <laughs> I, uh, we ended his career. We, you pretty much games. ended his. Yeah, no, nah, <laughs> he, he had a really poor game against the Raiders. I suspect he, he needs a bit more time to to play reserve grade to, to come up to first grade. It has been one hell of a fall from Grace. Yeah. From his debut his to... His debut was as, awesome. he's on the, He was on the, as you said, on the bench for reserve grade last yeah. week. And not even on the extended this week when they like, they've got half the origin back rowers in there. Yeah. Plus all their injuries, he's HIOs. so far down the bench. so order. far. Tough to watch, yeah. Um, mate, anything more on, on Nuffs? I mean, I, we probably haven't given you a real answer there. No, I know. I think it's... And I, I think it'll probably... Every team's going to be different. So... In terms of liking Cartwright for his jewels, I do have Tungo, who finally this week I've been able to shift back down to centre and I've got Talakai in the back row, so I can still switch them. Um, there might be a team who there'll be a lot of teams who only have Talakai there or only have one second row forward centre jewel. So for them it becomes a bigger play because they're going, all right, I want to be able to swap them over. It's good for depth, it's good for play on matchups, all these sorts of things. Um, there might be other teams who who already have, and this is probably the big one, there might be teams who have three or four nuffs in their side already uh, or non-active players due to injury, whatever it might be, Andrew for feeder worries. They might need to have a little bit more depth in terms of bringing in a player like like the Icy Pole who could end up being a 40 average player, which doesn't sound great for your team, but if we get to the back end of the season, you've got no trades left and your front rollers go down, you need to play him or you take those 40 points yeah. uh, as a, opposed to someone like Jed Cartwright or Hoskins who might not be playing at all or at every likelihood. So every team's different uh, and we've sort of laid out our thoughts on each one of them and so go and apply that to your team and go from there. Yeah, just on that West Tigers bench too, just keep in mind like they, they, he's been named in reserve grade, um, Alex Seafarth. I wouldn't be surprised to see him come into this side somewhere. You'd think the Matter Miller making his debut, they wouldn't announce well, his debut. Well, he started in the him. front row last week, Seafarth. That, that's what, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm a bit surprised he's out of the side. Now, Matt Miller, I would assume that they wouldn't name him for his debut and then not play him. That seems a bit that's rough. Evil. So I think Stefano will stay in the team. And as good as he was, the icy pole, if they were to bring Seafarth in, is he probably the guy that makes sense to drop out of this team potentially, unfortunately? Yeah, probably. So, and that's the, that's the third game of the week, so it's not ideal it's for trading. Yep. Yeah. So many concerns around all of them. 
It's tough. It is tough. Uh, and then, of course, as you said, we've got uh, the, the last guy, the Brisbane back row, Hoskins. He's playing in the last game of the week. So very tough. Uh, I think we'll be able to sit here next Wednesday and know who was the right call. But right now, I've got no idea. No. No idea whatsoever. Mate, fullbacks, our next hot topic. Um, names that have been thrown around a lot this week that have been in our DMs constantly. Teddy, Latrell, Pappy, Drinky. Obviously, Latrell and Pappy, very popular this week. I think, is it fair to say everyone is buying one of them this week? If you can afford it, everyone will, will be buying one of them. Drinky is more of a question of do we hold, do we sell? I've got him, so I'll be able to touch on that. But Teddy, a lot of people looking to move to Teddy. You've had him pretty much. Have you had him the entire season? Yeah, I think I have. Had the whole yeah. way, yeah. So let's touch on Latrell and Pappy this week first. Latrell, 99 last week. Um, he was very good. I wouldn't say he was at his best, though. Like He can be more damaging than what he was last week. You'd have to assume he will get more damaging with more games under his belt. He's got a really tough run, which scares me. Can't remember where I saw it last night. Somewhere on Twitter, someone sent it to me some stats of Latrell versing all the top six teams. It's not bad. He comes out with like a 75, 80 mm. point average, something along those lines. So he's not he, he's not a guy that I think is going to completely shit the bed against good teams. In fact, at the start of this season, I would say against the best teams that he played early, he played really well against Melbourne and these sort of sides. Latrell, though, I, I don't think I can pick him over Pappy. I can only get one of them. I saw Pappy play for five and a half fucking minutes the other night. He scored 100 <laughs> points. Like I, I just, as a, as a goal kicker in a top shelf team, I don't think I can possibly look past Pappy. What would you say to people considering Luttrell? Yeah, I was surprised so many people are going with... Not surprised because super coaches, footy fans, we love a bit of uh, hysteria in the moment, get excited. Luttrell, as he often is, is the, the hype man of the moment. Uh, and I think you're right, and, and those stats are right in reflecting. He's a bit like Cam Munster, super coach-wise, and NRL-wise, where he gets up for big games. So he's fixture-proof in that sense. But what I will say about that is that... He's he's gone well against good sides in good teams, really mm. good South Sydney teams, really good Sydney Roosters teams. But what happens? Like the Bunnies have been so unconvincing this season. They've got half their side out this week, including pretty well their whole pack. I'm just not convinced that he scores well against good teams. Let's if the Bunnies go out against these, like on the run home, they've got games against the Sharks, Eels, Panthers, Cowboys, Roosters. If those sides put 30 or 40 points on them, which is every chance and what we've seen so far this year, he won't score well against them because he mm. won't have the opportunity. So I think that's what changes this season. Uh, he's drawing the run home concerns me. He's such a super pod at like 0, 1% ownership, whatever he is, which we know will jump this week. I just think you're going against someone like Teddy who is so proven year after year after year. I like the fact that the Roosters are fighting for a top eight spot because I think barring injury or anything in origin, he'll back up uh, uh, in round 18 on the three-day turnaround against the Dragons. I'm not super confident of that, but playing for top eight spot, he'll really want to be in that game. Um, Teddy this year has a 144 to his name, a 126 to his name, running a five-round average of 77, averaging 73. I'm like, there's so many runs on the board there compared to Latrell, who's one game back from a really long hamstring injury. So... I, there's, I wouldn't be selling Tedesco to Latrell like a lot are. Um, and with how good Latrell is, you know, could easily be eating my words in one, two, three weeks' time. But uh, I'm, I'm hanging on Tedesco. And in terms of Pappy v Latrell, Pappy has five tons in 10 games this season. Mm. Like, what more has the boat got to do? Yeah, it's, his numbers are incredible, Pappy. Teddy is a guy that I think I might antipod. Mm. I don't think I'm going to end up with him, realistically. Mainly because I've got Scott Drinkwater, who's the other guy we haven't mentioned too. Mate, I look at Drinkwater's run home. I look at the Cowboys' run home, and I, I love it. Mm. I really do. Um, Sharks, Tigers, Dragons, Bulldogs, Roosters, Warriors, South Sydney, Penrith. I mean, take out the Penrith game at the very end, which I think I'll have enough trades to move him out of. you got the Roosters game, which will be a tough one, and you got the Sharks game. But, uh, like, it's the good. Sharks game's in North Queensland. Yeah. Um, First two weeks of head-to-head -head finals. Uh, dogs. Oh, Roosters, that is. I thought I might have Warriors. Yeah, Dogs. And then third week of Supercoach finals, Warriors. So, yeah, it's a good draw. And as, as you pointed out last week, which is a cracking point, round 18 against the Sharks, tough game. But that is literally 48 hours after Origin 3. Mm. Surely Val Holmes doesn't back up for that one. They don't need him to yeah. back up for it. So, Scotty Drinkwater should goal kick yep. in that one as well. So... A heap of positives. Uh, that's also off and the Cowboys having a buy, so they'll be fresh. Yeah, and, and I think 
the point with that is, yeah, so Teddy, I definitely wouldn't be selling. But if you don't own him, with all these guns, fullbacks available with upside, uh, like he's fine to antipod. Uh, because, <laughs> you know, if he comes out and punches out 50s and 60s for a few weeks post-origin, it's all good. But I wouldn't be selling Teddy if I owned him. I think I know what you're trying to do here. What's that, mate? You're, you're trying to sell people off Teddy. Interesting, interesting. We'll see trying how he goes. Sell you off Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I'll be able to get. I'm, I'm going to sit with Drinky for a couple of weeks. I'll have enough trades that if Teddy, as you said pre-show, Teddy goes berserk, I will be able yeah. to bring him in there. Uh, but yeah, the the Latrell move this week, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't get. I, I think the Latrell move has probably been pushed up a little bit because Pappy somehow made his break even last week. Mm. I think a lot of people were planning on bringing in it's a good Pappy point. off 80 points, yeah. which has sort of changed things a little bit. I'll tell you what, I'm glad that you know the, 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 we, we both have a team that's capable of bringing in Pappy because there's, there's a lot of, like, I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to go all in on these nuffs this week, which they all come with risk to be able to get Pappy into their side. And well, it could derail everything. That is two things. Either they tear the team apart to get Pappy in, which a lot will, or people simply can't afford him because he matched his break even last week and he's over 900k still. So it hurt last week, but long term it might be a winner. That in the fact that for people that can afford to get him in without tearing the team apart. Because if you if you tear your team apart to get Pappy in, and then we get to Thursday night and Hines gets the better score, and you've got your Pappy on VC, I I think that's done. Yeah, like you, you, you're going to be in serious curry if Hines gets on top. Um, let's get into some questions. The first one we sort of just answered it from Nick Phelps, Pappy or Latrell? It's Pappy, isn't it? Pappy by the length of the Flemington Strait. Yeah, it's a big straight too. It is a all over Pappy. Straight. Uh, this one comes from Fabian Dunstan. What to do with? Cola. Now, I believe you sold him last week or this week. This week, you're yeah. going for me. Yeah. Um, look, we know he, he got his ton last week, very timely, banked another 40, 50 odd K from that one, break even five. So he's one of these classic examples of, I don't see him <clears throat> playing in my centre wing on the run home at all. Um, yep. As good as he's been, well, two of the last three weeks and as good as he looked against Melbourne, but I just, I don't have a place for him in my team. He's done his job, made his cash, he's around 13 number, so more than happy to move him on. Yeah, I'm going to move him on. Potentially, no, my, my plan is Cola to Val Holmes in the mm. next two or three weeks. He's going to be my pod for the run home. Uh, maybe cut that out, Matty. Uh, but Manly next week, they play <laughs> the Newcastle Knights. Uh, I'm hoping he can get a score there and potentially get us some more money. I'm hoping, I'm actually hoping that Val Holmes doesn't play next week. Um, so then I can wait another week. I think Val Holmes' break even is like 15 or something. So hopefully if Cola can play next week, get a good score, and then the week after that I can move him straight to Val Holmes and I'll be riding those Cowboys uh, pretty heavily on the way home. But yeah, I'll be holding Cola for two more weeks and then I'll be moving him on. Potentially move him on next week if Val does play. Thankfully, it's the first game of the week, so I will know. Next one comes from MBF89. Why is everyone selling Angus Crichton? Should I hold? I'll be honest with you, I have considered selling Angus this week. I have considered selling IPAP. They haven't been overly convincing the last few weeks, uh, but I think I think we've learned a lesson this year about just holding guns. These two, I consider them both to be guns, so I think I am going to hold. Why would you, why wouldn't you sell Angus Crichton? What, what's your thoughts on this one? Because it, it is a fucking popular play this week. Yeah, I'm with MBF. Like, why is everyone selling him? He... So, prior to last week, he scored 60, 55, 83, 84, 73, all in 80-minute games. He's played 80 minutes every game since round six. Last week, he went to Penrith in the wet and scored 31 points in 70 minutes with a sin bin. Mm. Like, A, no one scores well against Penrith. Um, B, conditions didn't help. There's a sin bin on top of it. What has he done wrong to justify getting traded? Like, I just don't understand it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, mate. I... Why? Slap the reverse. Like, tell me, tell me why you'd trade him. Why are you considering it? Oh, it's only money for, for me, realistically. Um, and I, I looked at his scores and like they, they, they've been good. I, I think you, you, when you put a bit more context around last week, it makes a little bit more sense. Um, I'll off the back of that then, would you consider selling IPAP? I mean, the last few weeks haven't been great. I, I just, I struggle to trust Brad Arthur. We'll talk more about him soon, but... What are your thoughts on IPAP? So then? IPAP's identical. Last week, 38 points, and he still played 70 minutes, but that was in an absolute bog mm. of conditions. Prior to that, 73, 59, 71, 72, 113, 93, 59, 123, 
like, why? And he's playing round 17 this week, so there's not a chance you'd sell him this week. Um, the, the thing that people are possibly... 73 think, with a try last week. That's all right. Obviously. The, the thing with Crichton and Papali'i that people are obviously looking at is because they've both got good depth in the forwards and there's a bit of talk maybe Crichton moving on next season. We've seen him benched earlier in the mm. year. Like, if that happens and Papali'i starts playing 50 minutes or Crichton gets benched, all right, things change and that's fine. But as it stands, there's no suggestion that that'll happen. So I just... I, I, I think there's a fair argument there for Ipa. I mean, he hasn't played 80 minutes in five weeks. Yes, you just ran through those numbers. If you take out his try last week, which was, what, 27 points at minimum, all of a sudden your 73 becomes a 50. All of a sudden we're looking at a three-round average of 48, 49. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I think that there's a conversation to be had there. Yeah, the other thing is he's been an 80-minute player all season playing on the edge. Maddo's been named at 13 this mm. week. So back on the edge, hopefully that means he goes hopefully. back to his 80 minutes. So yeah. played 70 minutes last week on the edge, but there was no Maddo there. So with Maddo in that middle rotation who commands big minutes, maybe he's an 80-minute man when he's on the edge. And mate, we might jump ahead to a different question that relates here. <laughs> um, can I, I cannot fucking believe we're in round 17. I'm looking at the Parramatta back row and the safest one is Sean Lane. I know. Unbelievable. Now, this leads us to the question from uh, Dada Barber says, love the content, boys. Who's the better get, Lane or Matto? I'm not looking at either of these guys. I want to see what Matto's role is moving forward. I want to, I'm a bit worried about the rib injury that kept him out last week. Sean Lane, we, we spoke a little bit about him off mic last week. Um, he had one opportunity last week. He made it count. They, they were always going to go it. Um, Ilias last week, that was a good matchup. This week, Jackson Hastings, who's been beaten to a pulp over the last few weeks. I think he's struggling to move at all at the moment. Poor old Jacko. So Sean Lane, a good match up there. You are bringing Sean Lane in, correct? Yeah, he's really not come from nowhere because he's mm. been scoring well all season, particularly the last five, ten weeks. But in terms of on my radar, I really, you mentioned him last week, but it's sort of popped up to me this week. And I look back through his numbers, five-round average of 80, averaging 63 for the season. That's off the back of playing some fewer minutes earlier on in the season. Seemingly has locked in an 80-minute role uh, on the edge there. I love that he's playing outside Dylan Brown, who it's just a gold mine just because of the way he attacks and how direct he plays. It just opens up those opportunities for Lane so well. I love the way that Lane is linking up with the blokes outside him, whether it's with his offload or throwing a ball to Gutho, whatever it is. But uh, he's always been a little attack reliant. Maddo, uh, Maddo, sorry, Sean Lane. Uh, the last five weeks, he's really picked it up, basing around 50 points. So I hope he can maintain that. And if he can do that with power playing for it might be a top four spot, a top eight spot, whatever it is, a lot of big games coming up. With his attacking upside, I really like him. And the other thing is, I'm, I'm totally a fairly sort of cautious super coach player, and I don't really let the crowd deter what I do. But Teams are starting to become pretty similar. Mm. And I'm looking at my team and looking for pods in there. And I know X amount on this bloke and this bloke. And it doesn't overly excite me. So the fact that you can bring in someone, I think, as safe as Sean Lane, who plays round 17. So th these are his two player ownership stats. 3% on the official site. No one in the top 100. No one in the top 1,000. No one in the top 5,000. No one in the top 10,000. When I say that, 0%. Uh, top 20,000, 1% own. Top 100,000, 2% owned. So, gee, I, I see merit. That'll obviously change this week a little, but there's merit in it. I'm a bit surprised, <clears throat> considering the amount of people that brought in Dill Brown last week, that no one paired him up with Matto. Mm. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I, I was talking to my uh, brother-in-law the other day, and he was saying Dill Brown, and I said, well, you might as well pair him up with Sean Lane. And I, 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 I think he ended up doing it. I'm not sure, but that, I think that would have been the play last week. Yeah. That would have been unreal to do. Watch the boys go ham together. Yeah, it would have so. been great. Um Okay, I, I, I sort of think that Matto is another one that I potentially might not ever get him in my team. Matto Matto's really hard because in a round where there's so few genuine guns to recruit to your team, Matto is a genuine gun. And there's like a bloke you can bring him with confidence, you'll play him in your 17 every week, except he's carrying this rib injury. So as it stands, I'm getting Matto and Lane, but... If there's any doubt creeping up through the media on Maddo leading into the weekend's game, I'll probably just say, you know what, nah, stuff it. Also, Parra have unreal depth in their pack. Mm. So if he is dealing with a bit of a pain tolerance thing with his rib injury, 
he might not be the big minute player that we've seen at times this season. So uh, I just want to wait a little bit on him. But if he's good to go, oh, he'd be hard to ignore. So you're selling this week, Cola. Mm. Who, who are your other three? Cola, Campbell Graham, Appy Coruscant, Cam Munster. And Appy is going because I've got Robson there. Uh, so Brandon Smith's shifting up to hooker. And then... Have you got cheese, do you? Yeah. All right. I haven't played him in my team since I brought him. So he's two low scores. I was like, sweet, whatever. I brought him for round 17 with Harry Grant out as a big minute hooker. Yeah. So while the cash generation... Well, he scored well last week. So the cash gen, probably not as good as I'd anticipated, but I bought him as a round 17 number at a cheap price. So I'm hoping he can pay back this week. And then round 18 or 19, cheese will become Harry Grant. Yep. All right. Uh, speaking of your trade, you mentioned Campbell Graham there from at Josh Hickley. What to do with Campbell Graham if you've got him? Is he a must-sell this week? I mean, have we got any official word on how long he's out for? I've sort of... I heard eight weeks at the start. Yeah. Physio sort of said it definitely won't be that long. Let's let's round it out and say it's three weeks. We don't know what it is, but let's, let's just take a guess. If it's three weeks, is he a hold or, or do you let him go? I'm selling. And yeah. I think I, I've heard even sort of six to eight. Um, yeah. But I don't, I'm don't. i not sure that the full extent of the injury has been revealed. So, But even at three weeks, it's like with that really tough run home for the Bunnies, Pretty unconvincing this season. He's highly owned as well. So, I mean, you can sell him off and, you know, maybe he becomes a pod for the run home. But uh, unless there's word that he'll be back, could be back in two weeks, I just, I'm happy to move him on. Like, when people are moving on guys like Angus Crichton or potentially Isaiah Papali'i, like Campbell Graham's going to be the first one to go out of them sort of blokes. Yeah, for sure. It's funny, now that Campbell Graham has been ruled out and everyone's selling him now, I'm sort of thinking in, in six weeks' time. Could I maybe have Campbell maybe. Graham now? That's, it's weird how yeah. it works. Um, okay, let's have a look at from Adam Hobbs. Hobbsy, big fan of the show, a pod play, which uh, we didn't mention on the show last week, but we we sat here for about 10 minutes after, put up on the big screen his stats. Uh, I got dusted by him in drafts a couple of weeks ago. It made me sit up and realise him. Big Joe O from the West Tigers. Uh, Brett Kamali has handed him... All the responsibilities. Mm. He's playing huge minutes. 58 tackles last week. 58 tackles. He scored 80. Joe O, I've, respectfully to Joe O, I've never overly trusted him as a footballer. I've never trusted him enough to really have him in my super coach sides. I'm not sure if there's enough good scores from Joe O for me to think I can bring him in this week and he won't let me down. Mm. But numbers are numbers and he's killing it at the moment. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'm... Well, I'm the same as everything you just said there, mate. Yeah. I, like, I cannot even bring myself to even consider him in my team. But when you lay out the numbers on paper, he's got a five-round average of 74 points uh, with lows of 55 in that time and 380. So like, he had 74 in base last week and they got done 22 nil or something. So, look, there's not a... And the fact that he's 600K as well, like there's not a chance I'll bring him into my side in a front row forward position. He's dual front row, second row, so that's pretty handy. Um, like I know at the moment when we talk about these duels, I've got IPAP, Taumalolo and Max King in my front row. I don't have any dual front row, second rows in my second row. So I don't have like, it'll be good calm if I want to trade any of them. But as it stands, it's irrelevant to me. It doesn't matter. So yeah. if you could bring him in in sort of a second row or front row to get that sort of duel happening, uh, it's pretty valuable, but I'm not paying 600k for Joe. O. Yeah, it's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of those guys. If I, if I did a trust fall with him, <clears throat> there also could be. I think I'd rather yeah. fall forward. Like Parramatta this week, who aren't missing a lot. Penrith round 18, who we just said might be missing a few, but then Cowboys round 19, Broncos round 20. In these games where like there could be 40 nil score lines, there might not be a lot of ball in play, and like even if he plays decent minutes, it could be 40 points in base. Yeah. So. Uh, not for me. I think it's pretty evident too, as we said at the start, that Brett Kamali, he's debuted two front rowers in, or two forwards in two weeks. I mean, they're obviously looking to the for, to the future, the West Tigers, and the more that he debuts, it's probably, they, they could eat into Joe's minutes as well. I mean, surely they're not just going to drive him into the ground over the next 10 weeks so yeah. they can finish 14th. And the other thing there is, while, well, look, I think his minutes are pretty assured, particularly in the short term, uh, Stefano Udekamanu's second game back, so they'll look to get more game time into him. Alex Twole is probably the wild card on that one. Um, could be out for the season. 
But I like have we heard anything official on what's happening there? Because Nothing. if he's named next week, he comes in and plays probably 50, 60 minutes. So how yep. does that impact it? Uh, so yeah, just a few question marks. And you still, like you've got as you know we spoke about it before. Alex Seifer, who was their starting front row last week, he's now out of the squad. Yep. If he comes back to the extended bench, yeah, I, I just I, I I can't do it. Um, now, two questions here about CTWs. The first one comes from at Junior Glover. Says, uh, AJ flying under the radar uh, to some extent. But as we said, he is in doubt this week. Uh, he plays later in the week. With him in doubt, I don't think you could possibly bring in AJ. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are bringing it that already have Cody Walker, mm. probably already have AJ, um, that are now looking at Latrell and thinking about pairing up that South Sydney trio. With him in doubt this week and not playing the first game of the week, I, I, I couldn't even look at him. I couldn't consider it. Yeah. I just wish they had a bit softer draw. If they had a softer draw, uh, I'd be every bit of temptation to bring him in at that. I think we said 10% ownership in the top 100, thereabouts the whole way through. Five tonnes in his last... Sorry. Four tonnes in his last six games. Oh, wow. Um, it's about as good as it gets. Grant, yeah, and with split up by 31, 54. Yeah. Just the draw and the fact that the Bunnies are so depleted this week. Like If the Knights pack dominate the Bunnies pack, it doesn't matter what stripe how they've got out on, in the back line, they, they'll hardly get a chance at the ball. So that really concerns me. Uh, if he was 600k, I'd be like, you know what, maybe I'll just take him as a flyer. But he's 696k. It's a lot of money to spend on a bloke who's in doubt this week and has that run. Just one thing to keep an eye on, and I'm just trying to get his numbers up because I just thought of it then. If you do see that... Uh, AJ is ruled out. I believe it will be Richie Kennard that will come in for him, who's been doing very well in reserve grade. No, he's at 259k. It's too expensive to enough a guy there. Mm. I thought if he might have been a little bit cheaper, uh, he's a bit of a wrecking ball down there in reserve grade. And uh, dare I say, if AJ's back next week, I don't think Kennard gets into the side. Again, he could have been an option, but yeah. he's probably a little bit too expensive there. All right, uh, from Alex Bruce, who are the must-have CTWs. Now, I think um, our CTWs are pretty strong. I think mine are pretty strong off the back of what you said a few weeks ago to try and stack your CTWs for the back end. So at the moment, I've got Garrick, Manu, Molotalo, To'o, May, and I've got Cooler, which I'll turn into Val Holmes next week. And then my other one is Grant Anderson, who hopefully will be enough. So with those five guys, uh, and I, I might even turn Grant Anderson in a few weeks into a um, second rower and move Tungo down there. Is there anyone that I've that I don't have that, that you would say I should be trying to get my hands on? Uh, not really there, and I'm pretty similar. I've, I'm happy with like I've got Toto, Muli, Talo, Stags, who will just God, he's just killing me. Um, not that I've played him a lot of weeks to be honest in, in his poor scores, but I did play him over Campbell Graham last week. Anderson will be moved on in time. Talakai, May, Tungo. So I mean. Toto, Talakai, May, I'll probably lock them three in each week. And then one of Tungo or Muli Talo. Probably post Origin, I might look to turn probably Stags or Money Pending Anderson into back into maybe a Joey Manu or Ruben Garrick just to really stack that CT dub. Um, but yeah, look, I think a lot of those are pretty popular already in your Mays and Talakai's and Muli Talos and just the one post origin is you mentioned but Brian Toto who if you don't have him I'd be looking to get him in ASAP uh, whenever he's available next How are we feeling about Joey Manu? Fine Yep Well I may have said he got me Toto uh, someone had to go in my team and I'm not against bringing him back into my side so uh, I'm okay with it he's a worry to watch but uh, I, I am really hoping that Kiri I'm really hoping Teddy backs up from origin because okay. he worries me. This is going to be my next hypothetical. Yeah. If Teddy doesn't back up round 18, if Teddy move, if uh, Manu moves to fullback or five eight against the St George Illawarra Dragons Saturday three pm, uh, if it is nice weather, I think that'll be terrifying. Yeah. And Joey becomes a captain option. Do you trade him back in there? Every chance. Yeah. yeah. There's every every chance I turn. I mean, there's a million. I've got really good depth in my squad, so I've got yeah. options all over the place. So, but. Probably Katoni Staggs into Joey Manu round 18 if that is eventuates. If he's at centre, I'll probably just bite the bullet and just grit the teeth through it. But yep. um, if he's at fullback, he could do anything there. Do you think he stays at 5'8 long term now? I don't Kira's think not so. Yeah. Uh, even if he kills it. Um, I, I just... 
there's no room with yeah. Kiri and Sammy Walker. They'd take a big call to drop one of them, which Robbo could do it. Oh, yeah, Kiri, oh, I don't think they'll drop Kiri, but I mean, if he's had three weeks off, what's to say he won't have 13 weeks off? Yeah, who knows? That's the tough thing, isn't it? Um, I will say this about Manu, like... He's moved to 5'8 now. He's moved to fullback the other day, and he was probably the best on the field for the Roosters in both games. Didn't win either of them. Good point. So for me, if, like yeah. when they're heading into this Dragons game, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure Teddy will play. I'll be shocked if he doesn't back up for this yeah. one. Yeah, and, and his super catch stat's going to be a little misleading when he's at fullback and 5'8 and because he just has so many runs. But on that point, like in terms of team cohesion, he doesn't really pass the ball. He just runs every time he can. So whether or not that's the best fit, I'm not so sure. Well, that's the other, like he literally does not pass the ball. <laughs> so it, which you know he's a great player, Joey. But it, it becomes pretty easy to rate. like against the, against the Raiders that day. I think he passed the ball three times yeah. at fullback, which is you know he ran for X amount of meters. It was fantastic. But tell me, Ricky at halftime wouldn't have said he's not fucking passing the ball. Yeah. You just you just have to shut him down. Um, yeah, it's interesting with Joey. We can just see what happens in round 18 with the Roosters, especially because it's against the Dragons, who are a top eight team at the moment. Uh, so that would be a huge win for the Chooks to get that one. Mate, that is all of our questions this week. Let's have a look at captain options. And as I said, I have got 90% of my team this week playing on Thursday night. Hines, Pappy, they're the two obvious VCs as the uh, the only one in the top 100 with Jerome Hughes, I'm seriously considering rolling the dice on Hughesy there. But, and I'll hand it over to you, the points you made pre-podcast were very strong. You want to run us through those? Why I shouldn't? Yeah, I just think, like, the temptation is so strong. I can see it in that. But you just, sometimes you've just got to mitigate risk in Supercoach. And the fact that a stupid amount of, like, particularly top-ranked Supercoaches will have the VC on Pappy or Hines this week... If either of those two scores 180, which mm. could happen, and Hughes goes out and gets 50, it's like almost season done. Yep. And at 26 overall, you don't need to. It's like if you were 500th and going, all right, I need a bit of a Hail Mary to really get myself up there, maybe you do it, but like, you don't need to at this stage. Your team's set up well enough that you can compete for the top um, by I said, mitigating risk in a situation like this. So, And the other thing is, Pappy took over the goal kicking from Meany at the back end of last week. So you'd think he probably kicks this week. If Hughes does set up four tries and goes 150, they probably put 40 on them and Pappy might kick six goals and or, yeah. or be scoring off the end of his assist anyway. So yeah, I'd, you'd be a brave man, which I know you are. Don't get me wrong, but... I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> you. All right, let's answer the big question then. Hughes, Pappy, which one do uh, you... We we'll, we'll obviously get a free shot at the VC this week. Um, Hughes, uh, sorry, <laughs> Pappy or Nico Hines. Hines, obviously, last week scored 96. Did sweet FA. Mm. Could not believe he scored 96. Um, Pappy did sweet FA until the last six minutes and scored 130. <laughs> I've got no idea which way to go here. It's at points bet. Um, Hines, I think last week was also his best goal kicking performance I've ever oh seen. Oh, goodness, eh? Hey? In the lead up to that, he couldn't hit the side of a barn yeah. <laughs> for the entire season, whereas Pappy's a you know premium goal kicker. I, I, I think it honestly comes down to who do you think's going to win this game, pretty yeah. much. I'm going to go Pappy. What are you doing? Well, I, I still might go Hughesy, to be fair. I'll see how happy I, I am. I also come took Cronulla at what I thought was massive overs yesterday before teams were named, and then they've come in since and it's almost it's a dollar ninety a piece yep. so now i'm at thinking wise i'm like oh, i was happy to get the sharks of value but a dollar ninety a piece i think i'm probably flip a coin with it as well so um points that makes it interesting if it was at amy park and like you know what, i'll just go pappy but it can be a bit of a graveyard itself there uh points bet so look i'm leaning towards pappy just as I said, he's put 100 points on in his first game back from ages in seven minutes yeah so that just makes me think i've got to go him the wetter it is, if it is a heavy field again and pouring down, Nico just being at half, A, there'll probably be less tries scored, so it'll come down a bit more to base, which Nico should be making his tackles. At half back, he gets a lot, got a lot of repeat sets in the wet last weekend, so maybe he's the safer play. Um, but oh, I'm leaning towards Pappy at this stage. Yeah, just had a quick look at the weather. It doesn't look too bad for... Oh, what, what, is it Thursday night? Thursday night, Thursday tomorrow night, night, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's sort of meant to be clearing up 
Thursday afternoon. So Thursday, Thursday, two to six meals for Cronulla. Um, so might be okay. And then Friday's clear. So that could be clearing for the game tomorrow night. Tell you what, if you are one of those people that has brought in Latrell, and if these two both just happen to go 80, you could be very excited there. Oh, yeah. That, there's time. a massive a opportunity there. For um, yeah, I think I'm going to go Pappy. Now, let's say, let's put ourselves mm. in a world where both go... I mean, what, what, what score would you take this week? Would you take an 80 as a BC? I would. Yeah, yep. would you take a 70? Welcome 70, to Vice Captain Chicken. Yeah, 70, no. 75, yep. Yeah. Only because my other options and everyone There's would be in the same boat. All. There's yeah. bugger all. I, I'm probably going Papaliti as my skipper. Uh, otherwise, like I've got... If Cody Walker and the Bunnies had a stronger forward pack, I'd probably just gamble on Cody Walker. But without that forward pack, like I, I'm really concerned. I think the Knights win that game. So, yeah, I, I'd probably take 75. And if the boys flop, uh, if, if Pappy flops, probably Papaliti. Where, where are you leaning? Yeah, I, I Papa don't mind. I If it's going to be dry at Suncorp, I wouldn't mind taking a little punt on Ezra Mayer. I don't know if I'll have the balls to do it <laughs> by the time we get there. Uh, I just – I don't have – a heap of belief in this dragon side. Mm. Um, I think the Broncos will bounce back despite having a, a heap of players out, no doubt about it. I, I just think Ezra, he'll, he'll be the key to that attack. Uh, so I don't mind that gamble, but I think that'll come, that'll pretty much come down for me how Hughes he goes. Yep. If he, if he does really well and I've got a bit of wiggle space, I might take a bit of a punt yep. on an Ezra man because I don't think anyone else will captain him. Uh, but I, 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 the only two players I've got to choose from are Ezra and Papa Lee. And one of those nuffs if I want to take a huge punt it's on grim, them. It's grim, isn't it? It's very grim. So hopefully, Pappy, he can stand up and deliver. Hopefully, people, not as many people can afford Pappy as they thought. Mm. Hopefully, he can go uh, gangbusters. If one of these guys does go 180, the other one goes 80, and you got the VC on the wrong one, is that done, you think? Uh, not done, but in all sorts. Make it very tough. It's just such a, a pivotal... It's a pivotal round... Yeah. Every season, the, the last major buy around for the overall rankings, and you need to make up ground in it. But with that, if one of them goes 180, one goes 50, whew, it's, a, it's a lot of points to make up, isn't it? It's a heap of points. Very, very tough. Particularly, like, imagine if someone didn't own Pappy and someone owned Hines, went Nico, and he got 50, and then Pappy got 180. Not only did you not own him, but then yeah, everyone else captained him. Like, that's where it'd be a real... Yeah, it's a that's where you, you're probably done. That, that's where I don't understand how anyone has the balls to not just get yeah. Pappy this week. Yeah. I know it's expensive, I get it, but I think you just got to make it work. But there is the argument that you could pull apart your team and, and really screw mm. yourself elsewhere. So I'm glad I'm not in that position um, to make that tough call, though. Mate, uh, that looks like it's round 17, done and dusted for us. Is there anything else to touch on? Uh, nothing else to touch on, mate. I'm uh, launching a, a cheeky little punting podcast mm. with uh, Sammy Williams, former Canberra Raiders halfback officially now. So one of the the smarter minds in rugby league. Um, put it this way, he's played over 100 NRL games and he's not fast, he's not strong, so he must have something going on upstairs for him. Um, well, just to back <laughs> up what you said there, and obviously he's your brother, so you can't say hey, but I remember talking to Brett White a couple of years ago mm. on the podcast and I asked him about Sam and the role that he plays and he sort of described him as being like the best backup quarterback you could possibly have in the mm. NFL as far as... If they are playing the Penrith Panthers this week, they'll give the Reggies to Sam and he'll tell them in a post session how they need to play to replicate the Penrith Panthers. Like, from from, from everyone I talk to that's ever had much to do with Sam, he sounds like he's a fucking genius. Yeah, and, mate, across all sports, he's a freak cricketer as well. But So it's something that I've wanted to get going for a fair while now. And the fact that he's not um, affiliated with an NRL club as it stands gives him a bit more of a free reign to talk footy. He can obviously, I think, talk punting now, I hope. Better double-check that. But um, he can talk punting and that sort of thing. So while it'll be – we'll be talking about our best bets of the week and that sort of stuff, just getting in his footy mind and saying why he's doing this and where he sees weaknesses and all sorts of things, uh, footy tips as well. So pretty keen on that one. Yeah, halfbacks are a different beast, aren't they? They <laughs> yeah. get him out of the NRL. They are unreal Nuts. to talk to. Uh, beautiful guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We're getting those subscribers up on YouTube, so please keep pushing those. If you're listening on the Rugby League Guru podcast, make sure you subscribe to the Supercoach Playbook podcast. If you're on the Playbook podcast, make sure you subscribe to the Guru podcast. Plenty, com plenty of content 
coming your way on both of them. Uh, go out, grab yourself a case of Bloke in a Bar this week. Got the mid-strength and the full-strength, two cracking drops. Go and get stuck into them, and best of luck this weekend. Hopefully, Pappy can uh, serve us well. In Pappy, we trust. Pappy, we trust. Cheers, guys. We'll talk to you.